Well, good evening, everyone. It's been a very wet and windy Wednesday. I'm going to show you a look at how much rain we received, as well as those peak wind gusts, which were exceeding over 100 miles per hour in some parts of the Sierra, where there's been actually lots of rain, not so much in the way of snow hitting the Sierra for today. This was an atmospheric river category four, which means there's hazardous conditions that will be associated as this system starts to move its way through the region. Now, it was actually upgraded just a little bit from where we originally thought we were going to see the most action from this storm uh, as of last night. So we've actually looked at the potential for even more hazardous conditions developing for tonight through tomorrow. And I'm going to show you why. Most of that has to do with how much rain has been falling in the Sierra, adding to additional pressure on many of the reservoirs and the tributaries to hold that water that's coming down the hill. Okay, so we're going to get right to it because uh, we're getting a in the action but it's not gonna last for too long okay here we are with our radar and I'm gonna expand this just a little bit here so we can get a better picture of what we're looking at there we go uh, nice little break in the action currently for the northern San Joaquin Valley I know it's still coming down pretty good for the foothills and the Sierra and most of that has been rain so Placerville where we were seeing snow with some of those colder systems now we're seeing rain so it's been rain on top of snow which I know isn't the best situation Arnold as well and Murphy's and Sonora even through Groveland and Jackson where we saw a few flakes with some of those colder systems it has been a warm one and here's the reason why we've got this big deep moisture tap coming in well to the south of us feeding that low so the low kind of gets that uh instability going as well as uh that that rotation that we need to kind of draw in that moisture and that really helps to get a lot of rainfall coming in a short period of time. Tony wondering how we're doing at Oroville. We're doing fine. Plenty of capacity in the reservoirs. So uh, that's the good news on that. Um, but there's so much more on the way and that's why I wanted to highlight some of the situations that we're going to be looking at. Remember we're going to be categorizing these storms as they come on through during the winter. This is a category four, mostly hazardous, also beneficial and the beneficial is because we still need the rain. This is the time of year that we get the rain. All right, let's look at some of the hazards that we're currently seeing. Current creek levels, Deer Creek at Scott Road is at flood stage or monitor stage for Arcade Creek. Everything else holding below the monitor stage, but those are things that we will be watching. Jeff saying that his rain gauge in winters shows 2.65 inches of rain. Those are some of the heavier totals that we're seeing. Jeff, I'm seeing the same thing over towards the west side of the valley. Folks, we got a flood warning in effect until Friday morning. Heavy rain, flooding, clogged drains. Expect more ponding on the roadways for tomorrow morning's commute and snow melt, adding additional problems with some of the problems that we're already seeing with the creeks and streams starting to overflow their banks or at least getting very close to it. All right, so our flood watch is going to continue through Thursday evening. Again, water on the roadways, very possible for the morning commute, and we're going to combine some winds with that as well. Wind advisory all day tomorrow. Gusts 40 to 55 miles per hour, blowing debris, difficult driving. So as you head out tomorrow morning, not only are you going to have rain, but we're going to have the wind as well. If you're headed up into the Sierra, big change is coming. Winter storm warning in effect until Friday morning with three to six feet of snow possible, but it's not here yet. Now through Thursday, we've got this low right here. What's going to happen is we are going to, once that slides down to the south, we're going to get some of that colder air working in, and that's when we're going to draw in the possibility of thunderstorms as well as lowering snow levels. This next storm, Friday through Sunday, it's a colder one. That's going to be bringing some nice snow levels to folks uh, and fresh powder where we're getting rain right now just in time for the long holiday weekend. Okay, here's what we're looking at time-wise. Uh, here's 11 o'clock tonight, so you're still seeing some scattered showers through the valley and mostly rain for this year. It's not until you get to some of these higher elevations that we're seeing the snow. Now let me put this into motion where we'll see occasional heavy to moderate rain coming through. Let's say around 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, you could see some heavy rain around winters, Dixon, Davis, uh, even up towards Esparto, where we've seen some minor flooding already. 
Expect to see more of that possibly overnight tonight through early tomorrow. Now the morning commute shapes up like this. At 6 o'clock in the morning, we are still going to get, be getting moderate bands of rain coming through. Heavier rain for the foothills, and then it's still rain for the Sierra. But once the colder air starts working in throughout the day, you'll notice quite a bit more snow coming in from the uh, for the Sierra. When we get those cold pockets of air coming in though, what that's gonna do is add to the instability. And there's a slight chance we could see some of these thunderstorms popping up for the afternoon. Uh, we'll be tracking that all day long, possibility of some small hail um, and quickly accumulating rain as well. Okay, now as we move on through the evening, still seeing areas of rain all the way through Thursday evening, but again, that snow level starts to drop to about 4,000 feet roughly. We'll take a look at the detailed uh, snow levels in just a second. Again, today what we had was a deep moisture tap, lots of warm air coming into that low, and our snow levels were running pretty high. Temperatures are 10 to 15 degrees warmer right now than we were yesterday at this time. What that basically means is we've got a lot of moisture associated with this system and that's giving us a whole lot of rain. How much rain? <laughs> Just since midnight, we've had close to two inches for Marysville, Auburn, an inch and a half, Sacramento, closing in on 1.7 inches of rain, as well as Fairfield. I know Stockton and Modesto, we didn't get quite as much, but we still have more in store. Some of the other rainfall totals, 24 hour Marysville, 2.05, Placerville, Dixon, one and three quarter inches of rain, uh, almost that for El Dorado Hills and Orange Vale. We've got more rain coming in tonight through tomorrow, about a half an inch to an inch of additional rain from what we've already seen, and the winds will be picking up. Right now, they're at about 10 to 20 miles per hour, but what we're expecting is peak wind gusts similar to today at 30 to 40 miles per hour. Placerville with a 46 mile per hour peak wind gust. Squaw Summit, though, 127 mile per hour peak wind gusts for today. Alpine Meadows, 122. Mammoth, 120. Incline Village in South Lake Tahoe, closer to about a 55 mile per hour peak wind gust. Here's what we have for tomorrow. Winds for the morning commute, 25 to 30 miles per hour. Those are sustained winds. Those don't even account for the gusts that we'll see, which will be closer to about 40 to 55 miles per hour. We will start to see those winds a little bit lighter by the late afternoon and evening. But again, this is gonna be a system to watch. Now let's talk about snow. In the past 24 hours, only about four to six inches of snow. Not a whole lot. That's a pretty light accumulation actually from what we've been seeing. Watch how quickly those totals start to go up tomorrow afternoon, all because of these dropping snow levels. Like I said, tomorrow afternoon down to about 4,000 feet, eventually getting down to about 2,500 feet because here's why. This is just storm system number one. As the second one starts to come in, that's the colder one. So by Friday afternoon, those snow levels are dropping. Let's say you have holiday plans. You're headed up to the Sierra Friday afternoon for the President's Day weekend. It's gonna be messy, flat out gonna be messy up in the Sierra, driving up there Friday and Saturday. Now Sunday is a little bit better day if you wanna hit some of that fresh powder, but uh, it's still gonna be tricky in the morning hours when most of you wanna be hitting the slopes. It's during the afternoon, late afternoon, even the evening that we start to see things uh, lighten up just a little bit. I will say that the totals coming in Friday, Saturday, and Sunday look to be a little bit less impressive than what we had been seeing with last weekend's storm. For those of you that are saying, wow, this has just been brutally wet, rainy, snowy, the long range outlook is for drier conditions in Northern California. Southern California though looks like it's going to stay on the wetter side. However, temperatures are going to stay well below average. So we're not going to see a huge warm up coming into the long range forecast. If we take a look at that with our 10 day planner, you're going to see that yes, we will be getting warmer but we're still gonna be below average. Average highs this time of year are in the low 60s, and we'll be below that, even with the sunshine, a little bit below that. So again, for your Valentine's Day forecast, a chance of thunderstorms there for the valley, and it is going to be wet with more showers coming into the outlook because we just have this big moisture tap that just wants to continue to feed us 
with a lot of rain for tomorrow, especially for the morning commute. It's going to be slick, it's going to be windy, and we're going to find some ponding on the roadways as well. So uh, getting back to some of your questions, just checking in. Christine wondering if it's going to be as windy as last night. It is, but mostly towards the very early morning hours. That's when we're really going to see those winds starting to uh, get very gusty. Um, let's see. I think I've been answering most of these questions here. Um, just want to refresh this because sometimes it doesn't get me all the latest questions that people have. The biggest thing I wanted to let you know about is uh, what the morning commute is going to be looking like. And you can see periods of moderate to heavy rain coming in about 6.30, a big band of rain coming in right along I-80 and just to the north of it at 7 a.m., heavy rain. So that means if you're headed out on that early morning commute, you're going to find probably some standing water on the roadways. By 8 o'clock, it's just lighter showers, but you will find some isolated pockets of some heavier rain. And again, we still have that wind that we're going to have to be dealing with, not to mention already the standing water that they've been trying to clear up. Clear for today but it was just so much of it that uh, it's been having a hard time uh, uh, officials and just uh, oh workers have been for lack of a better term having a hard time just clearing out the storm drains etc uh, Craig saying that in Jamestown 43 mile per hour peak wind gust last night and that's exactly what we're going to be seeing again as as the deeper part of the system starts to finally wrap its way through northern california with our wind advisory in place for tomorrow 40 to 55 mile per hour peak wind gusts blowing debris difficult driving it's just going to be one of those mornings and afternoons that you know trying to use an umbrella probably not advised because it's going to turn inside out so as far as your ring gear just have a good jacket ready to go and uh probably going to be getting a little bit wet and even after we get done with tomorrow's system we still have that Friday through Sunday storm that's gearing up right now in the Gulf of Alaska it'll be a colder one snow levels will be lower uh, not quite as much snow as we saw with the last one to come through that dropped a lot of snow at lower elevations but you know uh, those of you that were getting rain today say Pollock Pines uh, even into Forest Hill likely gonna see some snow with that Friday through Sunday one um, so yeah, that flood warning, that is going to continue. We've got a few creeks and streams that have been overflowing their banks right now. And that's the situation that we're going to be watching at least for the next couple of days. Because as that water starts to move its way down the hill, that's what becomes a bit of a problem. Um, because we will have a lot of impacts with all the tributaries trying to keep up with everything that's coming down our way. Uh, gravity just takes over, right? Uh, so let me see. Um, yeah, I think I think we've pretty much covered most of everything that I wanted to go over. And uh, Jeff asking what happened? It started raining last night. Stopped raining this morning. My weather app says one hour of rain at 4 a.m. and that's it. Uh, disappointed in Modesto. I know Modesto did not get much at all. We kind of knew that Modesto wasn't going to get that much, but um, it just really hugged its way north of the San Joaquin Valley. So even Stockton got better rainfall than Modesto. Um, this is the rainfall totals just within the last, oh, close to 18 hours. Modesto only got about a quarter of an inch at best. So Jeff, you'll get more rain for tonight into tomorrow, but uh, it's going to be hit and miss. Occasional bands of some heavier precip coming in tonight through early tomorrow. All right, folks. So uh, here we go. Where we will remember, right? <laughs> it's very wet and gloomy and gray and cold, 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 cold. So many of you are getting snow that we haven't seen in years and years. Even Seattle, record snow for Seattle. Uh, we will conti continue to keep you posted. Of course, we'll be live on the LNT at 11 p.m. tonight with the latest on all the weather modeling that uh, comes in. Oh, uh, let's see. Sorry, just turned in. All of hers tomorrow. Lori, on and off, moderate to heavy rain, even in all. Hurst will have gusty winds in the morning for the commute 40 to 55 mile per hour peak wind gusts for the morning commute tomorrow and until about noontime so all right everyone
Thank you for your questions. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope you stay dry, cozy, and warm tonight. And uh, we'll see you on the LNT. If not, see you tomorrow. I get it. Maybe you're in bed early. So join us for the morning blend. LNT, 5, 6, and 11. We're always here. Always on. All right. Have a good one.